So there are a couple different conditions that we pay attention to across the country uh, as we're thinking about hay storage. Uh, the first thing always is uh, we should think about getting the hay bales off the ground because hay bales that are left uh, outside where there is rain, the soil is wet, they will soak up moisture from the soil. As they do that, then uh, those bales begin to rot. Now we used to years back with small square bales just let the bottom layer soak it up and wrap and throw them away. But when we have one ton bales, that's a lot of hay to lose. So, so the, the important thing would be anything to break the surface. Some people will store square round bales on top of an old tire. Some people put it on top of a sheet of plastic. Uh, some people put it on asphalt or concrete if you have it. But anything to break the contact of the bale with the soil is truly beneficial to keep that bale from taking up moisture from the soil. Now the second thing then is covering the bales. And, uh, and there are two very distinct differences. In the Western United States, we tend to cover hay piles mainly because we don't want them to over dry. So it keeps the moisture in the bales so it doesn't fall too low and then the bales get brittle and we have a number of other considerations. Uh, in areas where rain is a concern, then we would cover the hay bales to keep the rain from going into the top layer of bales and again causing the moisture content to grow up and mold to grow. If we're just a couple degrees above the optimum temperature, like say we're 18% moisture on a medium sized bale, which should be stored at 16, we'll have some heating but no microbial growth. If on the other hand, we put that bale up at 20 or 22% moisture, then we will have microbial growth. And the microbes, of course, are using up the starches and the sugars. They're giving off heat and carbon dioxide. And so we're basically losing energy from that forage. We're making it less palatable. And of course, we're eliminating the potential to feed it to horses who are particularly susceptible to mold. And then, of course, the last concern about mold is a danger to humans, particularly if we get aspergillus mold growth. Those spores are toxic to animals. It'll make them sick and cough and maybe die, but it'll do the same to human beings. In the West, we, we use both uh, hay barns and, and tarps, um, and both are, can be very effective. That you know, They have uh, companies that do tarping of hay uh, for a fee for service. They'll come out and tarp your hay um, in the field, and, and it generally retains its quality for pretty long periods of time. If it's gone through those you know, steps of you know, allowing a little bit of uh, drying to take place before you put it into a tightly packed situation, and that's, that's a key issue as well. Um, but uh, I can't tell you how much uh, damage we've seen, and I think this is actually more common in the east than it is in the west, but we see a lot of damage of hay from uh, hay that's not been protected from the elements. And, um, uh, you know, generally when you think about all the energy and, and time and money and, and water and fuel that's gone into the production of hay and, and also technology in terms of the baling technology, uh, let's protect that uh, quality.